Whenever it's warm and there are animals of some kind, there will be snakes to hunt them, no matter how difficult the conditions and how awkward the mouthful. Crabs are in plentiful supply in this mangrove swamp. There must be 50 on any one of these trees around it. They're all up there waiting for the tide to go out so that they can feed in the mud below. So there is a meal for a snake here, but crabs are not easy to tackle. They're strong, armour-plated and covered in spines. For a snake to tackle one of these would be like me trying to eat a lobster twice the size of my head with my hands tied behind my back. But there is a snake that knows how to do so. The crabs cling to the arching struts of the mangroves to keep out of the way of predatory fish. But as the tide retreats, it becomes safe for them to climb down and start looking for such edible bits as the tide has left behind on the mud. For the moment, they're safe. But soon, the sun will set. Then the snakes will come out of their burrows. They hunt in the darkness, but we'll be able to follow them with our infrared cameras. It's now very dark indeed, and the snake has to find its way around entirely by touch and smell. Finding crabs is not difficult. They swarm all over the mud, and the snake is almost bound to encounter one sooner rather than later. The snake is armed with venom and has short, strong fangs which can pierce a crab's shell and stun it. But that's only half the problem. It's what it does after it's caught its crab that sets it apart from all other snakes. It has it. Now what? The crab is so large that the snake can't swallow it whole. Slowly and deliberately, the snake dismembers the crab. Each leg contains nutritious muscle. But the crab's armoured body is simply discarded. Too difficult.